Hey everyone, uh, today's blog is about how skepticism is a great strategy but not a virtue. As an co online coach, I help people transform their lives and go forward, but a lot of times we meet this, or I meet this resistance when people are exposed to a new idea or something that seems kind of weird and they say, hey Sean, this isn't going to work for me because I'm not you, this isn't going to work for me because you don't understand me. This isn't going to work for me because it's just flat out wrong. And, you know, a healthy level of skepticism will say, okay, I have this belief on it. What am I not seeing? Right. And a lot of times our biggest breakthroughs happen when we have a little bit of doubt on our belief on ourselves, our belief on other people, our beliefs about the world. So, uh, a healthy level of skepticism is really helpful for us to grow, for us to sort out good information from garbage information. And, you know, but when it's amped up too much, we can't believe anything, right? We can't, other than what we feel is true and our feelings are not the most logical representation of the world. And if we don't have enough doubt, we just believe everything on there, uh, you know, we fall into the gullibility trap where you can believe some really crazy things because you're not consistently questioning what's coming in your noggin. So well, when I first got into personal development, I actually was right there. I was overconfident in my ability to figure everything out on my own and I didn't really think I needed help. And you know, this really changed during the first job in my career in, in technology when I just started to burn out. I was stressed because of finances and student loans. I was stressed because of the hard hours of the job and you know being on call, getting woken up at two o'clock in the morning consistently for a week. It really messes with your sleep. I was feeling like I didn't really control my day at all at work. Um, I didn't really have a lot of time for my personal life to kind of recover. And so these were all things that I let happen to myself and I didn't really kind of see how I got there and I didn't see the way out. So I did what any good nerd would do. And I started to read up, you know, Dale Carnegie. I started to, you know, study personal development and personal finance as a way to get out of my situation. And it was that, that uh, decision that something needed to change. That's really, at some point I was like, I had enough. There has to be a better way. I am not able to, to figure my way out of it myself. How can I challenge that assumption that it's all on me and how can I look for help, look for new ideas and try some new things to have a huge difference in my life. And that's when I found Brendan Burchard and his talk on high performance. And the ideas were new, some of it were it's uncomfortable, a lot of like, you know, level up your energy, be more vibrant, be more zestful, it seemed a little bit um, big, you know, for kind of how my personality was kind of more quiet, especially at that time. And, but I knew something needed to change. I knew what I was doing wasn't working. So I was like, okay, I'll give it a little test and we'll see what happens. If it improves how I feel, reduces my stress, lets me live life in a greater way, then awesome. If not, I tried it, I can rule it out and then say, forget about it. And so that, you know, call to action to try some new things transformed my life. It transformed how I felt about my job, how I felt about myself, how I was showing up, you know, led to promotions. It led to me, you know, feeling confident and bold enough to, you know, figure out and try to like start a business and all sorts of good things, all from suspending that belief that it was all me to figure out and that I knew everything because I think as you grow up, you realize how much you don't know. Uh, at least that was for me. So Having that level of skepticism in my story really helped transform my life. And I hope it transforms you. And, and maybe you're like, this isn't a huge thing, Sean. Like, I'm already, I got this. I, I question things pretty regularly. Or maybe not. And that's okay. Wherever you're at, here are the five things I look for in evaluating personal development information, advice, new ideas, um, to really kind of suss out if it's going to be helpful or not, right? Because the other thing is, there's so much information out there that if we don't have a method to say, is this going to be helpful? Is this gonna be garbage? You know, you can waste a lot of time reading stuff that 
isn't going to help you. It might actually pull you off the path, right? And we want to keep you moving forward. So um, with that said, here are five things that I look for in personal development advice or any type of new idea or information to see if it's relevant for me. So the first one is, is the information not judge me, <laughs> not judged, right? So there are other folks out there that will say that you are not doing enough, that you need to go out there and grind, or you know, there's these messages where they're passing judgment on you, where the implication is that, hey, you're lazy, hey, you're not good enough, or hey, like, you're not disciplined enough. And for some people, I'll say like that message really does resonate, but the communication about it where it's, I know something and I'm looking down on you that I have a problem with because, you know, Here's the thing, right? Everyone's situation is unique. Everyone has different ways they like to be communicated, different messages that will resonate. And so if you're feeling like you're being judged by the thing that's trying to help you, what you're gonna do is, at least for me, I resist that. <laughs> so, um, and you're more likely to pass judgment on other people. And I, I don't think that's a really good thing. We have seen what happens when you're constantly judging other people in society uh, this past election cycle and all that stuff without getting into that too much. So good information will not judge you on where you are and your path, right? So it's really just more concerned on where you wanna go. So great information will say, hey, you wanna live a better life and be a better parent. Well. Here are some things to consider to help you along that way. And whether you're a beginner, you're just first kid, fifth kid, whatever, these are things that are good practices that can help you be better at what you want, right? So they're more focused, I think, on aspirations than on character flaws. That's another way to kind of look at it. And this is how I, I will filter information with this. If it comes out condescending, if it comes out judging, if it comes out um dividing people it's like oh it's these people versus us i tend to discount it because i have found that when you do that you can get caught up into biases and things that don't really help you grow as a person so that's my thought on it um, second thing it should help you discover things about yourself right you should learn something new about yourself new about how to approach things, new methods of doing things. If it's helping you gain insight onto how you operate and how you interact and operate in the world, I think it's super, super helpful. Um, things that are just parroting what everyone else has said um, can be helpful if you're not at that like very beginner stage of personal development, of high performance, of psychology or whatever you're, you're studying or whatever you're looking to um, evaluate for yourself. If it gets you to see yourself, others, or the world in a different way, that can be really, really impactful because it allows you to say, okay, there's a different path that I could take. There's a different way I could do things. And this healthy doubt of, is my way the best way or can I modify what I'm doing to you know, advance to the next level. And it's very, very great for that iterative approach to personal development, which I think everyone should believe in. Um, because we don't make huge strides, it's usually small decisions that make huge change in life. All right, the next point that I kind of look for is how, how does it help me get perspective, right? All right, so more than just learning more about learning, or uh, helping you learn more about yourself, others in the world, does it allow you to say, okay, here are all the different angles that you could take a look at how to improve your finances, how to parent better, how to get in the best health of your life. You know, sometimes, you know, if you're like trying to get into better health and you're like, I'm focused on diet, maybe you need the perspective of maybe your diet's dialed in, but you're not moving enough. Maybe your health is dialed in, you're moving enough, you're eating right, but you haven't really focused on sleep, which is part of your well-being. So how do we broaden the things that you can consider and the approaches that you can take to get the outcome that you really want? So um, it, it's what I do a lot as a coach. <laughs> you know, so much of as a coach is just asking good questions 
and trying to get people to, to say, okay, what other perspectives could I take on this struggle in my life or this goal in my life? Um, and I, I'll say right now, if you are interested in having someone that is fighting for the best you, helping you try to be more vibrant, more confident, more joyful in the world, um, and you need different perspectives on how to get there, uh, go to seanbutner.com backslash coaching and sign up for a free strategy session one-on-one -on -one with me um, for one hour. Where we'll dive into your life, what's going on, and have a tailored plan based on the perspective of high performance on how you can improve and advance. So it's really awesome. Everyone loves it. So be sure to check out seanbutner.com backslash coaching. Now, um, back to the points though, all right? Um, if Good advice should be action-based, right? You're looking for habits, you're looking for best practices, you're looking for uh, things that you can operationalize in your life, right? Different ways to say that. Because if the information motivates you to get into action more consistently, that's when you'll see deeper change. That's when you can actually, it goes from philosophy that lives in your head into the world. And I see this in a lot of, personal development information that's out there or advice that people give where they want you to think about things, but they don't want you to change, right? And what's the point in taking in all this information if you're not going to do something about it, right? You take a look at movements out, you know, politically in the world. Like, it's not think about change and hope that it happens. It's like, go out, vote, have your voice be heard. Um, so it's super important to have things that are action-based versus just philosophy, right? So if you discover something or have a different perspective on it, how does it change how you're gonna show up in that, right? That's how those points kind of tie into this. Get into action, get moving, get in the game, start moving forward, and um, make sure you have people cheering you on as you go, right? The final thing that I think really helps when it comes to evaluating information or being skeptical or having doubt about the world is, is the information you're presented with raising your vision? Is it getting you clear about what the next steps are, how you want to be in the world, how you are happy in the world, how you can be a force of good in the world? Um, you know, finding that next path forward, you know, can be really helpful. So like information, like you want to become better guitar player, somebody doing a video on the pentatonic scale so you can do some blues stuff really well, can be really good for you. Even if you're like, I don't like scales, I just wanna play you know, the folk songs that my parents did or rock and roll or country or whatever. Why do I need to know the blues scale? Um, well, being able to, to solo a little bit better, show, you know, being shown the scale can help you say, oh, like, I can play stuff outside of the, the things that I thought I could. Maybe it was too complex, uh, but you know, a lot of times when we're trying to level up skills, seeing the next level or seeing ways and paths that we can become better can be super, super valuable. So that's how I evaluate information. That's how I approach being skeptic or being skeptical, questioning things, seeing if they're gonna go for me. Do they help me not feel judged or judge others? Do they help me discover something new about myself? Do they provide perspective and different angles on how to look at things? Are they action-based, trying to get me to change in the world? And then do they encourage me to get clear on the path forward um, so I you know, can move forward more confidently? So I hope you enjoyed this blog. I'm trying a new type of style, so let me know below if you like this or not. Uh, I'd love to get your input um, on how to be better. So please provide feedback um, if you would. And we'll see you next week with another kind of longer form uh, video like this, okay? Thanks guys, take care, see ya next week.